Welcome to the clubhouse. My name is Alice and I'm so glad you've joined us today. This time around we're going to learn about some simple bookbinding. Sometimes these little books are called chapbooks and when you put a bunch of them together to make a bigger book, the cool kids call them signatures. <clears throat> there are a lot of things to know when it comes to bookmaking and for that reason we're going to be putting out a few videos on the subject. Now let me say this at the top, I'm not an expert at bookbinding. I have made a bunch of books over the years, and what I actually am an expert at is, is utilizing what's around you to make. You don't need all the fancy stuff to make a passable book. You just need to know a few important points, and if you keep them in mind on your binding adventure, things should work out pretty well. So here in this first video, we're going to be learning some of the basics. Later on, after you've become an expert at making these little guys, not cool? You can take a stack of them and with a few knots and some carefully applied glue, make them into a proper hard bound sketchbook or journal if you're more into words than drawings. If everything all goes according to plan, we'll even be working in some of your beautiful marbled pages for some beautiful finishing touches. Now that's subtle video plug if I've ever seen one. Y'all be sure to go check out paper marbling. It's an awesome video, but I shouldn't get ahead of myself. First things first, let's learn how to make a saddle stitched chat book. Now for everybody out there that doesn't have a widget or is a few pieces short on their whatnots, we are making some drive-by crafting kits for you to follow along with our videos. Not all of our how-to videos require specialty tools or materials, but if you can't remember where you put your pokey stick or you gave away your last cardboard loom, we have put together several drive-by crafting kits on our site, 5 in one socialclubcom All right, you and you over there, here's what you are going to need to get started. Paper, all sorts, the more the merrier. Making your own sketchbook lets you choose the paper adventure and there are so many options. You'll want some cardstock or other heavy paper for your cover, an X-Acto craft knife, ruler or straight edge, cutting mat, large eyed needle, thread, some wax, and a pencil. I love making little books, and whether you decide to be super precise and persnickety, collecting all the fancy tools, or you just wing it, it's up to you. Your little book will be useful either way. So our first step is to choose our papers. Now each of your pages don't have to be the same. I recycle a lot of scraps from other paper projects for these little books. You could alternate a heavy watercolor paper with a lightweight paper for a fun multimedia sketching journal. This is also a great way to use pattern paper that you've collected or made. You can even throw in some envelopes between pages and you've got a great notebook for collecting that ephemera. I tend to keep the number of pages in these small. Too many sheets and these books are hard to assemble. If my paper is a heavier weight, like watercolor, I'll use less pages. So 8 to 15 sheets of paper is a great start. When you multiply your sheets by 4, you'll know how many pages you'll end up with. So a book with 8 sheets of paper is actually 32 pages. Yay math! So again, if your paper is something heavier weight, like watercolor or handmade paper, use less pages, especially if you don't have an all. An all. What's an all? Why this is an all? So we're going to decide the size and the orientation of our book. Is it a square book? Is it tall and narrow? Is it horizontal or vertically oriented? Is it just the size your paper already is? Half the fun of making your own book is choosing that perfect size. You may find that you need to make more than one. So we're gonna fold our sheets in half. So if you want your finished page to be six, six by four, you'll need to double the width. So my sheets will be six by eight. We're gonna use our craft knife and ruler or straight edge to trim our pages. So if you haven't used an X-Acto before, or you haven't used one in a long time, just a reminder, on the blade, that angled bit is the sharp bit, right here. So that side is the side that's gonna cut, right? The angled side, oops, sorry. The angled side is the side that's gonna make those cuts. And you're gonna hold it like you do a pencil. So I have some pages here already cut down. Let's cut a couple just to show you how this works. So my pages are six by eight. 
So I'm going to mark that real quick. 6 wide and 8 long. And I'm going to use these, the grid already on my mat to help me quick cut those. So we're going to hold our ruler with firm, even pressure. We're going to cut right along the edge of it so that it makes a nice straight line. So this is some heavier paper, which is why I cut it twice, just to be sure. So now I'm going to cut it 8 inches wide. And I've lost my little mark, so I'm going to measure that again. And again, I'm using the lines on my cutting mat kind of as a cheat, but you can mark that on both sides to get a nice straight line. I'm going to use a little pressure running right up against that ruler to make a nice clean cut. If you're using thin sheets of paper, you can actually pile up more than one at a time. So here I have four or five sheets going to lay them down. You do want to make sure that you've gotten all the way through the paper before you move on. So again, I'm going to line that up, find my mark, and I'm just going to keep cutting until I've come all the way through. So here's a couple. That one's still attached, so I'm going to slice again. You can make a little shortcut for yourself and cut through more than once. All right, so for our cover, we're going to use cardstock or you can use any other kind of heavy paper. Um, we're going to cut it to the same height as our paper, so mine is six inches long, but then I'm going to leave it a little bit wider than my interior sheets to help hide some of that unevenness that we'll see later once we fold. So I'm going to give this just a little bit of a trim. I found this cool sheet in my stack of scrap. Almost already the exact right size. Oh, did you see what I did there? I moved my ruler without checking to make sure I had cut all the way through. No biggie, just going to go back and give it another little trim. So again, this is about a quarter inch wider than our interior pages. So our next step is to go ahead and fold all those pages. I like to do them one at a time for nice crisp folds, but you can definitely group them together and do more than one at a time. I like to do them individually, partially because I think this step is really fun. So I use my fingers to line up the edge of the paper folds that sheet over, again lining it up with my fingers for a nice crisp edge, and then I'm using my thumb to make that initial crease. So I'm going to do that to all these pages. Now again, if you're using thinner paper, you can go ahead and fold them in a bundle. So I have three sheets that I've grabbed here. They won't be as crisp and tidy, but that'll get the job done. So now you're going to want to come back to those pages, and we're going to use a bone folder to make a nice crisp crease. This will give us a more professional looking book in the end. So this is a bone folder, and it's got a kind of soft edge here. We're just going to run that along our crease. So maybe you don't have a bone folder. Well, I tried some other things. Um, and I actually really didn't mind using the back of a spoon. So you can run that along your fold and make a crisper edge, like so. And again, this step is optional, but I really do like that nice crisp fold in the center. I think that it helps your book lay flat once you're done with it. So we're just going to keep creasing all those pages. All right, now to fold your cover, which is that heavier paper, we, I have a little trick for you for that. Um, so first I'm gonna mark the center, and this paper is eight and a quarter, so my center 
or eight and a half rather, excuse me. So my center is at four and a quarter. I'm gonna mark that top and bottom so I know where my fold line is. And now I'm going to use my ruler. I've laid it along those marks. I'm gonna grab this piece of paper and just fold upward against that hard edge of the ruler. And now I have the start of a crease. So when I fold it over, and use my fingers to press it, I'm gonna get a much nicer crease than if I had just folded this. And you'll wanna do that with any heavyweight paper you have. So next, we're gonna lay these pages out in the order we'd like them. If you're using any shorter pages in your book, you'll wanna make sure that they're lined up so that the holes you punch, punch in them will capture them. So we're gonna put them together, make them nice and tidy. I'm just sliding them one inside the other, like so. And again, you can use any paper you'd like, mixing in any sort of fun stuff in that interior that you feel like, whether that's scrapbooking colored paper, watercolor paper, tracing paper, graph paper is super fun. All right, so now we're all tidy. I'm gonna slide that inside my exterior cover make sure all of those folds are lined up and then I'm going to use some binder clips to just grab top and bottom. This is going to hold those pages together for me while I stitch like so. All right so now we're going to grab our awl. If you don't have an awl and there's all sorts of things that look like awls, this is my favorite. It's all metal construction Super durable, had it forever, really easy to use, doesn't hurt my fingers. There's this type that kind of looks like a little wooden egg. Also fun and easy to use, good pressure there. Um, now if you don't have an awl, I found that a thumbtack works great as well. So we are going to poke five holes in our seam. Um, you can measure these out to be equidistant with your ruler or you can just eyeball it but you do want your top and bottom hole to be between three quarters of an inch or or a full inch from the top or bottom so I'm going to do these three quarter and then I'm going to eyeball the spacing for the rest so I'm going to do one here in the center again I'm making five holes but you can change these as you wish so you can see I've made five marks there for my holes. And now I'm gonna place that flat on my mat and I'm gonna use my awl to poke through right there on the fold. So I'm twisting a little bit. That's gonna help it go through. And again, whatever you have that will poke through is great. So I'm gonna check and make sure I went all the way through to the back. Looks pretty good. I missed that cover just a little. So I'm watching my fingers carefully as I do this because I am using some pressure and I don't wanna poke myself. All right, so now we're gonna sew these pages together. I like to use a heavier weight thread um, so here I have some, I think it's upholstery thread. So we're going to cut it to the appropriate size and to figure that out, we're gonna stitch up our, our spine and then back down. So I like to double my thread with just a little bit extra to make sure I have enough. We're going to wax it next. So I've got a candle here. And I'm just going to run that along the top. So I'm holding my thread against the wax. I'm gonna put my thumb on top of the thread and then just pull through with my finger like so. This helps you sew. It's gonna keep your stitches nice and tight and your knots firm. So two or three times is plenty. You'll start to feel it kind of get a little stickiness on your fingers. All right, so next for the sewing, we're going to thread our needle. Got a nice big eyed needle, so this should be easy. 
and we're just going to do a single thread and we're not going to tie a we're not going to tie a knot in the bottom so we're going to start in the center and we're going to stitch through oh that's a big needle and we're going to leave a little tail inside probably should have chosen a darker color so you could see that better let's go ahead and do that I'm going to skip the wax And again, you want to cut that to about two and a half times the length of your book and a single thread there, no knot at the end. And we're going to sew through the center of our book. Yes, you can see that much better now. So I've left a little tail. It's about three inches long. I'm going to grab it with my thumb so that as I stitch, I don't lose track of it. We're going to stitch to the top of the book and then back down to the bottom. So I'm in that next hole. Again, I'm holding on to my tail. Oh, that binder clip's in the way. Make sure to pull that tight each step. Now I'm in the top hole, lost my thread. So I've come out that very top hole, I'm gonna make sure all my stitches are kind of pulled tight. And now I'm gonna work my way back down. So I'm gonna come back through that next hole, right, into the center. Now I'm going to skip over the hole with my tail. I'm going to go to the next hole and work my way to the bottom of the book. Now I'm in that last hole at the bottom. I'm gonna work my way back to that center. So now this last bit is gonna come through the center of your book. Now this is important. You wanna make sure that each end of your tail, I have two ends, my original and the one my needle is on, I want to make sure they're on either side of that stitch in the center. If you don't tie around that center stitch, this whole business will just come apart. So I'm going to pull both tight and then tie an overhand knot. Once, oops, like so, pulling it snug and then a second time. Now we can trim, and you can trim those pretty close. The wax is gonna hold it all together. Remove your binder clips, and your little sketchbook is done. So you can put this um, under some weight overnight, under some books, and it will help it stay closed for you. And also give it a little firmer press I love making these little books. And whether you decide to be super precise, collecting all the fancy tools and being persnickety about measurements, or just wing it a little bit like me today, it's totally up to you. Your little book will be useful either way. So join us next time when I'll show you some fancy cover ideas, how to deckle the edges of your paper, ooh, what's deckling, making handmade envelope pockets, and more. And you can see, fellow citizens, you've gotten yourself a new making skill. Simple as that. These little checkbooks are just adorbs, and they're the best for keeping your apocalypse bread recipes, charting your fertilizer applications on your lawn. You can keep them by the bed for your amazing waking hour ideas, or next to your sewing machine for logging your mask patterns. They're almost like, what do you call it again? Oh yeah, a blank slate, but way less heavy. All right, y'all. I'm getting way deep down into the dad jokes now, so it's probably time that I stop yucking it up and get back to packing those drive-by crafting kits for you. So this is Alice, signing off from our Summer Avenue Clubhouse. See you soon!